Hello and welcome to Refuse. Uh, did you hear that little spike there? Still haven't quite got my voice back yet. Um, starts out like okay in the day, but as the day goes on, I talk more. It cuts in and out, but <laughs> you're sick of hearing that. Uh, that's why I've been trying to give my voice more of a rest, you know, with the holidays coming up. Uh, so I, I've been skipping a few nights, I'll be honest. But today is Wednesday. It is New Comic Book Day. And oh, didn't, I, didn't I just read West Coast Avengers number 5? Didn't that just come out? It's bi-weekly now. Was I just surprised before? I just don't remember them coming out this quickly. But anyway, um, this week Marvel is doing something that's pretty cool. Um, their tribute to Stan Lee. All their issues have a black bar at the top. Um, you know, Stan Lee and, you know, they do something on the interior. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and for some of the covers, uh, it makes this look, this looks really cool this way. Um... But the the problem I have with this is that the, it, it ends up putting the title at the bottom, you know. And yeah, I, I understand it's a respect thing, and you know some of the covers are cool. Like I picked up the Defenders. Uh, my shop only had the um, uh, the Scotty variant, which you know looks good. I mean these two covers look good, and you know even the Captain Marvel one looks good. The problem is, when I was at my shop, you have things covered, and it kind of looks like this. And so I'm looking at the rack going, what books are these? <laughs> I can't even tell what they are. Um, now, what I wish they would have done is, you know, kept the regular logo at the top. You know, had the black bar at the top um, with the Stan Lee. Instead of having the title down here, this was probably so quickly you know to make the change in the in the as they're going to press um and of course you know it would have cut off part of the art it would have been i would have liked it if they just resized this a little bit did a black border all the way around with you know stan lee and um and then have the title that's just me um but it, it's still it's nice to see that uh, marvel did do a tribute and uh the issues in fact i just I haven't read, like, the Captain Marvel, but the ones I've flipped through, you know, when you open it up, you just... Ooh, that looks bad with that line there. Um, but you get two black pages. And then, uh, you know, basically, they add a couple extra pages, basically another for the cover here. Um, and then instead of having the, uh, the title and everything where they usually have it, uh, it's actually on... The inner page. But yeah, you get uh, three pages black and then uh, the, the portrait of Stan Lee. It's, it's really nice. I mean, it's very touching. Uh, yeah, it, it, it seems kind of a waste of paper to me. But it's nice that Marvel did something. I mean, shh, they didn't do anything like this when Jack Kirby died. But... Um, but yeah, this is really nice, and it goes along with, you know, we just lost Dicko a few months ago, and, you know, if you remember, they did something kind of similar, but, you know, um, I mean, Stan Lee was, he had the charisma <laughs> and everything. Uh, in the back, just before I forget, yeah, the cover, the back cover, all black. Um, and yeah, it's like that on the other issues as well, um, which also made it a pain in the butt for my comic shop to to scan it up um and then they have stan's very first soapbox that he did and you know i'm old enough to remember when i uh when i read you know comics you know I, you know when i was a kid you know marvel had their bullpen bulletins you know basically their page of upcoming things and yeah there was stan's soapbox always in there and i read it every time so it's you know, this is one of those things that it really, really draws the point that, you know, Stan is gone. It's just kind of weird. Uh, and here I am, I'm four and a half minutes in. I haven't even talked about this book because I don't want to. I really don't want to talk about this book. Um, yeah, because after reading, you know, reading, you know, flipped open to this, you know, just the two solemn black pages. You know, you get to this, you know, smiling Stan, you know, looking back at you. It's appropriate that they use the sketch here <laughs> instead of a, a photo. Um, it's very appropriate. And then I turn the page. I'm like, oh, 
Yeah. West Coast Avengers. So the issue starts off, if you remember, all the West Coast Avengers except Kate have been captured. Um... And we have all the villains here. We got uh, Satana, we got Modoc, we got Madam Mask, uh, we got the Eel, we got Butters, um, and uh, you know, she, uh, Madam Mask, Mask, Mask. Sorry, my voice is, you know, uh, acting up. Uh, she says, "Well done, all of you." Um, and, and so let the auditions begin. Okay, not quite sure what she means by the auditions. Yeah, remember, you get points for creativity, and will lose points for killing them. And here's where it kind of falls apart. Here, we are here not to kill the West Coast Avengers. That would only bring more heroes right to our doorstep. Ding, ding, ding. Good, good idea. Good. Have you ever read Empowered by Adam Warren? I, I, I know you know fetish. Stuff aside, that's a really good book when it comes to deconstructing. And they always talk about the unwritten rules. You know, the villains don't kill heroes, you know, because that'll just bring everyone down on their heads. So it's, it, it's, this is smart that, uh, come on, come on, butter, stop, um, that she's saying this. Uh, no, we're here to reclaim our city so that we can get back to business as usual. We are here to break them, to divide them, to crush their spirits. That there's nothing sadder than a broken superhero. And by sadder, I mean more delightful. So instead of secretly killing them, you're just going to break their spirits and let them go? You don't think they're going to tell anyone? They're not going to tell Cap and Iron Man and Thor and, you know, get the pardon the pun, the big league out here. That's that's a stupid plan. It started off reasonable and then got dumb. And Modoc just moved to the West Coast. So his plans that he had are already up in smoke. Uh, I don't know Eel, what he's up to. Why did they go back to the stupid Eel costume? The first Eel costume. <sighs> So, Madam Mask's plan is to just torture them like Bond villains and then let them go, not kill them, not keep them captured, not... Does anyone even know the West Coast Avengers are there? They could take, you know, they obviously have them at their uh, disposal. They can kill them and hide them and just lay low. This is stupid. This is a stupid plan to try and be like a, 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 a Bond villain. And the art in here is a little bit worse than it usually was. In fact, I went back and checked to make sure that, uh, you know, it says that still Danielle, um, I say that, uh, Dean Nic Nicolo, um, I'm probably butchering that. Um, she's the previous artist. Um, and some of the art here just does it's 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 rushed, obviously. When they went to bi weekly, she's not quite keeping up her usual standard. And uh some of the characters look I mean if you didn't have the oh god, and these goofy, these silly captions, you know, descriptions, I'm not even gonna go I'm not even going to go through them. But if you didn't have this, would you know that was Quentin? I mean, maybe if you twigged on the fact that he has his shaved head hair thing here if you notice them between you know between behind the uh uh word balloons but if you cover that who is that <laughs> uh so they're all hanging up in cages you know suspended over sharks and uh you know uh man mask reminds santana not eaten but chewed on would be good fine i can live with chewed on and so, yeah, it's a shame the booth has to be soundproofed. I'd like to hear their mewling. Look at that one yells. Prophetic. Uh, pathetic. And, of course, talk about Quentin, but why does the booth have to be soundproofed? Why? Uh, obviously, that I will give a little bit of a... Uh, there is a reason why to that, but in a way it also doesn't make sense. Um, so, yeah... 
Uh, Madam Mask says, well, if everyone is ready, let's turn this up a notch. Santana asks, where are Lady Bullseye and the others? They're rounding up our troublesome stray. Of course, it's Kate Bishop, and she's found her mom. And her mom is leading her out of here. And, uh, you know, Kate has these doubts about her. She puts a tracer on her. But she also realizes she's being followed as well. So, she knocks an arrow and shoots it. I'm not quite sure what this is, what exactly she did. Is it a tracer error? A arrow? Excuse me, arrow. I can't even talk tonight. Is it a tracer arrow? Because it goes ping? And it, someone. At first I thought, is this someone yelling someone? Is this a sound? What exactly is going on here? Um, so then, of course, she gets hit by uh, throwing stars, which tells us it's, it's Lady Bullseye. And then Kate does this. Um, she tells her mom to cover her eyes. And she shoots, you know, huge, um, you know, basically like flare ar arrows, you know, blinding arrows. Why didn't she do this the first time? Instead of doing this ping arrow, which I'm still not sure what that is. Um, why didn't she do that first? You know, close her eyes, blind the person, uh, wait for them to react. And then Lady Bullseye gets hit with a little tiny fist arrow. It's a punch arrow. Okay, I know. Everyone makes fun of the boxing glove arrow. When you make it that small, it doesn't really help. And I'm not even going to go into how arrows work and how that should still cause some serious damage. Uh, it's comics. Not as much damage as an explosion in her face, which, being flipped over, knocks her out. And Kate Bishop notices that Lady Bullseye has earplugs in. Now, as you know, um, everyone is having problems with their powers. Uh, they're experiencing headaches. That's why they're in the soundproof room. Uh, why Madame Mask and everyone is in the soundproofed room. Why can't they just have earplugs? Okay, maybe Modoc, you know, he's got his giant head thing. Does he even have ears? Um, so, yeah, okay, fine. We'll give that a uh, soundproof thing. But they could just be using earplugs, too. You know... Or you could be like helicopter pilots and wear, you know, the uh, headsets that muffle out the noise, but you can still talk to each other. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting uh, way into the weeds here. So we get an ass shot of Katie as uh, she's catching up with her mom, who's trying to lead her outside. And uh, Kate's mom tells her to run, to leave. Uh, if she turns around, her mom won't be able to help her. Uh, but she's a good team leader and has to go back for her team. So she puts the earplugs in and we cut back to the rest of the team. Uh, Quentin and Gwen have been dropped into the water, which has Gwen punching the shark in the nose. Now, this may sound weird. I actually read this once. This is actually, if you're being attacked by a shark, this is actually what you're supposed to do. You know, if you're... You know, it's harder to punch underwater, but if you're in a position where it's above water, you're supposed to punch it in the face. And that's, that's, I, I read that. It's actually, I suppose that's true. I've never been attacked by a shark, so. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the dialogue in here, it's bantery, but it's not funny. The art is weak. Um, and so Santana says, they're boring me. Let's add another Lemmy to the water. Perhaps a charming but powerless extra one that doesn't even have a costume. So they drop Fuse's sister, but she grabs on. And, uh, you know, as the shark leaps up for her, how are they planning to have the sharks only chew on them but not kill them? Okay, they're controlled by Modoc, but still. Uh, she eventually loses her grip and falls in. Now, she's out on a date with uh, America. Amer they, we don't see America's reaction until here, um, when she's actually reacting to Fuse, not on her date. And as you know, she is Fuse's sister. And then Fuse does this thing where he says, concentrate, don't have to hold it for long, just a moment. And he goes all Wonder Twins and turns into water and drops down into... Uh, into the rest of the water. 
And uh, America says, do you know, did you know he could do that? And uh, Clint says, I'm not even completely sure what he did. Santana goes, interesting. Why? Why is that so interesting? He can take on the properties of anything he touches. Uh, when his sister fell in, probably some water splashed up on him. Or maybe he's doing some type of perspiration thing, but whatever. Um, so, you know, his sister asks him, you know, uh, are you okay? Uh, not really. So now you're not okay, and you're in the water with your sister with the sharks. What exactly did you accomplish? So Quentin comes up with a plan, asks Gwen to catch him, and uh, he concentrates and does a boom and <laughs> sends all the water and sharks flying, sends all the water out of there. And uh, Gwen says, yes, that was awesome, as Quentin passes out. And, uh, you know, his nose is bleeding, and she talks about how she could kiss him, and but he's got a bloody nose and clean his face. And then uh, Quinn looks over and says, Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Land sharks? That's cheating. Uh, it's actually just a dolphin, ma'am. Oh, I used that joke in the first issue, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. I, I, By the way, it's an old Saturday Night Live joke uh, going way, way back to the 70s. Um, so... <laughs> Clint does something awesome. Basically takes his shirt and everything he has uh, in his uh, um, cage here. Because he does have his arrows. Um, Lady Bullseye had his arrows. So he improvises, you know, with his clothing, you know, basically uh, a, 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 like an arrow, <laughs> a bow out of that. Um, I'm not sure how good that would work, how well that would work. Um, but... It's nice to see Clint do something like that. You know, it'd be awesome. And I should stop here soon. Oh, and this is a... This was a little problem I had. You know, we get this awesome shot here. And America says, you know, ask for some bolts. Um, even though... Is it more like arrows? You know, use bolts with a crossbow. Uh, maybe they become... Whatever. Um, uh... So we have the two of them, you know, America says, you know, give her some bolts because she can put more force behind it. Um, and he he says, you know, challenge accepted. And then we immediate, immediately cut to Kate. And this was just two pages before, like a couple pages before when we last, okay, maybe a little bit before, but um, we last saw her going back in and... Uh, and then she uh, falls <laughs> into this water thing. Apparently, that's where all the water that Quentin sent. And, yeah, I'm like, okay, what happened? It feels like something, we missed something. And, uh, so, yeah, I'm going to stop it right there because we find out that this shadowy person is her ex-boyfriend. And I'll just leave it at that. Um... Yeah, this book is rushed. I don't know why they went bi-weekly. Um, and the art suffers. Um, yeah, because you see some of this here, like, you know, Madame Mask. And, you know, these face shots here. You know, America looks pretty much on model with the way uh, Danielle's been drawn. Or, um, this looks like some Street Fighter uh, stylized art, you know? Um you know, that Capcom type style. Um, yeah, this people doing stupid things. That's what this book is. Villains doing stupid things. The heroes do stupid things. And the writing is not... It, it's, it's Kelly trying to be funny. And she's almost there. I mean, I've been saying this before. She's almost there. And there's some parts. But I, I can't get into it because the villains are being stupid. You know, um, we just have them, Modoc taunting them with the land sharks. And it's hard to take it seriously when you know they're not going to kill them. Yeah, they'll just get chewed up a little bit, you know, obviously wounded. But then why? That's not going to break them. You guys are not newbies. Modoc has been doing this 
for quite a long time. Madame Mask has been doing this for a long time. You know, she's she's romance Tony Stark. She should know that you can't break them. And if you do break them, they just come back tougher than before. And this book is dumb. Uh, I like the cover, you know, with the outline of uh, her boyfriend, who, by the hair, I thought this was going to be Quicksilver. And I was trying to figure out how they were going to work Quicksilver. Why would he be there? What connection he has? Um, but yeah, with the uh, with the uh, Stanley tribute, and I have to look at what the cover was originally. I remember it was this pose. I don't remember if it had a background, but it works really well. The cover is the best thing about this book. You know that and the Stanley tribute. So yeah, uh, this. 430. I'm giving this book a 430. Um, I'm really only reading it for Gwenpool and Quentin at this point. I don't want to see the two together because that seems really goofy the way they're doing it. But uh, yeah, I'm really reading it for these two characters and because I barely know who Clint is. And that scene in the cage with the, with the makeshift bow, that's the Clint I remember. So anyway, uh, 21 minutes. Wow. <laughs> uh, my voice is going, as you can tell, I'm having problems, and uh, be another video tomorrow. Not sure what time. I gotta work late tomorrow. I might do another video from uh, from uh, my lab at work. So, anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.